When you were a baby, you perceived the world as a playground of possibility. Nothing was impossible. All you had to do was use your imagination and you were able to create kingdoms and cities and characters that came to life. When you got a little older, chances are you experienced your first dose of self-doubt. That first experience that broke the pattern of the optimistic vision you had for yourself. Perhaps it was your first grade teacher who called it on you in front of your classmates and you got the answer wrong so everybody laughed at you and a seed was planted in your subconscious which grew roots which turned into the belief called, I'm stupid. Or perhaps when your younger sibling was born, you no longer received the same attention from your adults and a seed got planted that turned into the belief called, I'm not important. Or your first crush ever rejected you and you adopted the belief that you aren't lovable. In order to tap into the possibility of what can be available to you as an adult today, living your most actualized, amazing life, you must first and foremost relearn everything you thought you knew. Why? Because your beliefs, which are made up of thoughts, become reality. This is a foundational rule of manifesting. If you think negatively, your life will manifest negatively. If you think positively, your life will manifest positively. Cognitive neuroscience has shown us that as adults, our subconscious minds are made up of neural pathways. These neural pathways get formed as a result of our beliefs, thoughts, and habits. For example, the four-year-old who was called stupid will thicken and strengthen an actual pathway of neurons in her brain each and every time she has an experience that validates the belief that she is stupid. The thicker the pathway becomes as a result of continuously affirming this belief, the more tangible the manifestation in your physical world will become. Hence, this adult will find herself in situations more often than not that reinforce the belief that she's stupid. I'll give you an example. Take Lisa, who suffers from physical chronic pain and continues to day after day think the thoughts and speak the words, my body hurts and therefore I can't exercise, or my body hurts and therefore I'm exhausted, or my body hurts so I can't function like a normal person and accomplish the things I want to. What Lisa is doing every time she utters these words is she's strengthening that belief And as a result, she's manifesting more of what she does not want, which is physical pain. In order to break the vicious cycle, we must recognize the voices of criticism and self-sabotage that try to convince us that we're doomed, damaged, or not enough. Most of all, in order to begin to change your reality, you must have the faith that you can undo any, and I mean any, circumstance. The moment you think that something is not possible for you is the moment you manifest the impossibility of that very thing you want happening. Once you've accepted this foundational rule that you can relearn, undo, and change your circumstances, you've already begun to open a magical door to a whole new world of miracles. So where do we actually begin with this? Narrative therapy teaches that our problems are not us. I am not my fear. I am not my critic. I am not my insecurity. 
these voices of negative self-talk are characters in your life that try to keep you living small. So what I like to do is give my characters, in my case, my inner critic, a nickname. For example, my inner critic's nickname is called Debbie Downer. She likes to find the negative in situations. She likes to keep me playing small by telling me that I'm not good enough or worthy of achieving greatness. If your inner critic has this dubious skill as well, you can tell yourself, oh, Debbie Downer's doing her thing again. When you think of your inner critic as a force outside of yourself and even give it a nickname, it's not only more easy to realize that you don't have to agree with her, but she becomes less threatening and more easy to see how ridiculous some of her critical thoughts can be. I often catch Debbie Downer in the middle of her act and I tell her, here you go again, coming in and trying to steal my thunder. Luckily, I know that you are not me, so there's the door, Bye bye I've seen people heal from physical trauma, from being in a hospital bed and told that they might never walk again. I've seen people in their late 60s find their soulmates. I've seen people go from bankrupt to billionaires simply because they decided to break the pattern of limited thinking and replace their self-limiting beliefs with thoughts of greatness. What does your inner critic say you're not capable of? What are you going to name her? And what is the new, better feeling thought that you are committed to repeating often in order to break and lessen the neural pathways of old limiting beliefs. Once you've got this foundation down, you are well on your way to unlocking the miracles that are waiting for you. Sharing is caring, so if you liked what you heard, pay it forward, share this with a friend, and as always, happy manifesting. Be manifesting.